Three, two, one, and we are live now. Yes, sir. So, shall I start, sir? Yeah. Yes, proceed. Right. Okay. A pleasant uh, good evening to one and all. On behalf of uh, AP Vellu Branch and the Government Vellu Medical College and Hospital, I uh, extend my thanks to National Vice President Dr. Palneepan sir for giving this great opportunity. Now we proceed to the meeting. So today's uh, postgraduate Dr. Alu Sharon going to present approach to valve heart disease uh, with the moderators Dr. Damodaran sir, who's an associate professor of medicine, Government Valley Medical College and Hospital, and Dr. Devan sir, assistant professor of cardiology, Government Valley Medical College and Hospital. So now hand over to the postgraduate to start the case presentation, and hand over to the moderators, Dr. Sh uh, Sharon. Yeah, before mm -hmm. that, before that, Dr. Anita. Ah, yes, today, sir. Yeah. Our ah, heartiest welcome to all the panelists for this yes. wonderful South Zone and South Mid Zonal APA and PE Master Class. So, okay. since the end of years, we are conducting this every without any one week, any week dropout. We are uh, continuing this program since two and a half years from the time of uh, era of uh, COVID-19. So this program actually it's very useful and a lot of inquiries from various postgraduate students. Those are completed as well as those who are studying also. They, they got much benefit because in this forum, you are exposed to various professors uh, the exim knowledge, everything. So after completing your this uh, MD general medicine, you may go for a specialty, super specialty, or you can go for a uh, practicing in the periphery of the city. So this will be very much useful for every postgraduate students as well as practicing physicians. So. Every every two months or three months, one medical college from Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu, we are having more than 55 medical colleges, both private and government medical <laughs> college and depend be med depend be institution. Uh, from there, uh, every week one postgraduate will be presenting. And from the general medicine people as well as super specialty people, they are moderating and uh, we are going one by one. You know, from from the history as well as general examination and system examination, other examination and differential diagnosis, all the things. So it will be useful for the practicing physician as well as postgraduate students. So this week we are having valvular heart disease. One of the important, important uh, we have to discuss, especially valvular heart disease. I am running a 55 multi specialty hospital. After MD, I did a diploma in echo. So for the after that only I am well versed. I got a distinction in diploma in echo cardiography under the leadership of Dr. Chenyapan sir. So valvular heart disease is a very, very vital thing. It may be commonly, it may be post MI patient, mild MR or moderate MR or severe MR. And valvular heart disease many times it's missed, especially tricuspid regurgitation mild, moderate, severe, which is due to the pulmonary artery hypertension, maybe primary or secondary pulmonary artery hypertension. These two heart disease, you are not supposed to miss because if you have this, the treatment of choice will vary. So preoperative evaluation, the patient is having moderate pulmonary, hyper, pulmonary artery hypertension or severe pulmonary hyper, artery hypertension. It's a high risk any time they may end up in death. So acute pulmonary artery hypertension, acute TR, unless proved otherwise, pulmonary embolism, pulmonary embolism. So all the things you have to keep it in mind. So it's a the valvular heart disease, heart disease, it may be acute or chronic, it may be a vital thing. If you detect, you will enjoy it and you can treat appropriately. For example, pulmonary Embolism induced valvular heart disease, trigger regurgitation, mild, moderate, severe. So usually here, pulmonary artery hypertension, usually RARB dilatation invariably will be there. But pulmonary artery hypertension is there, acute onset, but there is no RARB dilatation, 
commonly it's annulus proved otherwise it is palmitic embolism so many cases we pick up and we thrombolize and survive if you don't detect early many times ecg will not clinch the diagnosis many time sinus tachycardia alone embolism if you are well versed with echocardiography this should tissue doppler as well as color doppler everything he can do wonders for the patients so what the postgraduate students point of view so acute so post mi patient or acute pulmonary embolism or copd with corporal nail these three are vital you should not miss and second thing is chronic rheumatic heart disease so you have to be very keen so here it's a completely clinic clinician oriented practice so clinical evaluation all the things valve heart disease we will be discussing as well as here we are having a cardiologist he will discuss regarding the echo also investigation wise also which will clinch the diagnosis how to proceed everything so all the things it's very important so vital so valve heart disease is uh, one of the important important uh, clinical approach so we will proceed with the case and you can uh, dr uh, devan Hi, uh, so introduction, introduction before starting the classes. Over to Dr. Devan. Uh, Sharon? Yes. yes sir. Are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. I'm able to hear you, sir. See, so, uh, you start presenting the case. Then uh, first you pronounce the history and summarize the history. Then I'll, we'll start the discussion so that you'll, your nerves get settled down. You just start the presentation. Okay, sir. Yeah, over to Anita. You can proceed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sangram, any introduction you want to give? Dr. Sangram, he is a governing body member of National API. He has joined in our forum. Okay, sir. You can give some introduction, uh, Dr. Sangram. Our heartiest welcome to this forum. Yeah, nothing, Dr. Paliyapan. Let them continue. It is a okay. great going. All students are enjoying. Yeah. Okay. Great going. You kindly start. We, we are there. Okay. Yeah, you can ask all questions uh, to the postgraduate student, Sangram. You can. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. No problem. Okay, no problem. okay Anita, you can proceed. proceed. You yeah. take a look. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sharon, you start presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Good evening. Mr. Dharmaraj, a 75-year-old male coming from Poigai, working as a temple priest for the past 20 years, belonging to the upper lower socioeconomic class as per the modified Sami classification, presented with the chief complaints of chest pain for the past one year and breathlessness for the past eight months. History of presenting illness, the patient was apparently normal one year back. He had history of chest pain for the past one year, intermittent episodes of pain, now worsened for the past one week. This insidious in onset, retrosternal, squeezing type of pain, which is diffuse and poorly localized with no radiation or referral. It is aggravated on doing any work and relieved by rest and medications. It is not associated with palpitations, sweating or feeling of impending doom. It is not associated with wheezing or cough with expectoration. There is no relation to food intake, no history of trauma to the chest or lifting heavy weights, no history of skin lesions over the chest. He developed breathlessness since the past eight months, insidious in onset, Initially, he had breathlessness on exertion, which was grade 2 NYHA. It was gradually progressive over the past eight months. Initially, he used to perform two pujas in the morning and two pujas in the evening without any discomfort. He needed to take rest between the pujas. Gradually, in six months' time, he found difficulty in performing the pujas. And in the last two months, he is having breathlessness at rest. He had one episode of nighttime awakening due to breathlessness three months ago. It is associated with dyspnea in the lying down position or company there is no history of fever, no history of cough with expectoration or hemoptysis, no history of wheezing, no history of swelling of legs or abdominal distension, no history of syncope, episodes of loss of consciousness, reduced urine output or fatigue, no history of voice change or dysphagia, no history of recurrent respiratory tract infections, no history of cyanotic episodes or fever with sore throat in childhood, no history of skin lesions like rashes or nodules, no history of weakness or limbs, of limbs, headache or seizures. Past history. Shall I proceed to past history, sir? Are you finished presenting the entire no history? Of, uh, yes, sir. Then we'll start from, uh, from the okay. beginning. No history of similar illness in the past. No history of the type 2 diabetes mellitus, systemic hypertension, pulmonary tuberculosis, asthma, COPD, ischemic heart disease. No history suggestive of sexually transmitted diseases. 
no history suggest of rheumatic fever history of surgery for right inguinal hernia 8 years back and eventful perioperative period personal history he consumes vegetarian diet bladder and bowel habits are normal sleep disturbed due to breathlessness in lying down posture appetite is normal does not smoke or consume alcohol no other addictive habits no history of extramarital or premarital contact family history is the ninth born to a non conservatorian marriage no history of significant cardiac disease in the family no history of sudden death in the family summary a 75 year old male patient with no known comorbidities with complaints of chest pain for the past 1 year and progressive exertional dyspnea for the past 8 months initially from nyha 2 has progressed to nyha 4 with no palpitations syncope or cough with expectation of pedal edema i would like to consider the following possibilities ischemic heart disease and valvular heart disease probably left sided stenosis more than uh, regurgitation aortic valve probably involved more than the mitral valve so sharan yes sir ah okay you go back to your first slide yes sir oh so whatever you told is ischemic chest pain for one year with breathless and eight months so your first diagnosis was ischemic heart disease and second diagnosis was valvular heart disease right yes sir can you explain me the uh, mechanism of chest pain here we'll uh, go just... one one we take one one symptom we'll explain okay. the mechanism so we'll dissect the symptomatology first then we we'll go to examination another next 15 to 20 minutes we'll see about the symptomatology so can okay. explain me the chest pain here you so told it is anginal pain right yes sir anginal oh, okay. pain uh, to differentiate that it is anginal pain it is the character of uh, the uh, site of the pain is usually retrosternal sir and character of the pain will be squeezing crushing type or like a feeling of a he uh, heavy sensation around the chest it will be diffuse it not uh, uh, exactly localized there will be this variation of the pain towards the left upper limb towards the left shoulder or into, even to the okay. ulnar part of the left hand and it will be aggravated by exertion and exposure sir i uh, just explain me the mechanism of chest pain in aortic stenosis since you told it's aortic valve chest yes, pain sir. here only to one yes, possibility now yes, whenever sir. the patient presents with breathlessness especially middle aged female you think of mitral valve involvement right here okay, you sir. present a 70 year old male presenting yes. with a chest pain uh, with the breathlessness of chest pain of one year duration right first yes, thing sir. anybody will think first possibility you will rule out always is ischemic heart disease in the form of chronic stable angina whatever your presentation is second okay. thing will be which valvular heart disease present the chest pain aortic stenosis ah uh, the yes. okay chest pain. now now you will describe me mechanism of chest pain in aortic stenosis what was your okay. thought process so in aortic stenosis there is a fixed cardiac output sir so on exertion the cardiac output does not rise in like uh, in like in expectation for what is required sir so that is one uh, mechanism and also in as there is lvh uh, like left ventricular hypertrophy sir so because of the oxygen supply uh, demand supply mismatch also in aortic stenosis there will be chest pain sir basically there is an imbalance between the supply and and the demand right because yes, of your hypertrophy left ventricle there is a increased systolic pressure with the prolongation of ejection okay, okay because sir. your because your hypertrophy lv there will be finally there will be prolongation of ejection which leads to elevated myocardial oxygen consumption on the opposite okay. side what happens is that there is decreased myocardial capillary density in, because in the hypertrophy ventricle as well as there is increased left ventricular end diastolic pressure with shortening of diastole so these are all things happening one is one leads to elevated myocardial oxygen consumption the other opposite side leads to decreased coronary perfusion gradient so there will be decrease in myocardial blood flow this is the okay. main mechanism for my, this is the main mechanism for angina and as second associated thing is coronary artery disease as we previously told right is there any other thing you want to rule out another one rare cause will be the calcium deposit in aortic valve can goes into coronary that is called coronary emboli so basically this chest pain you need to rule out ischemic heart disease second thing is aortic stenosis the third thing is calcific emboli to coronaries so there is demand supply mismatch actually that's what causes chest pain right second yes. thing, how will you explain here dyspnea in as what is the mechanism of dyspnea in as I mean, AS uh, again because of the left ventricular hyper uh, in uh, dyspnea and AS occurs as a late complication, sir. Because of the left ventricular hypertrophy, then there is an elevation in the right left atrial pressure, and then pulmonary capillary hypertension, and then pulmonary venous hypertension, which causes uh, pulmonary congestion and dyspnea. So basically, there is increased left ventricular end diastolic pressure, 
which leads to pulmonary congestion right which yes. leads to and second thing is there is a limited ability to increase the cardiac output especially yeah. you told exertion and all now your patient is having pnd orthopnea right yes sir ah uh, okay these are all the late symptomatology of aortic stenosis okay yes sir it doesn't present initially so your examination has to say at least moderate to severe yes let us see what happens so now the mechanism of chest pain you understood the mechanism of dyspnea in as you understood there yes, is sir. no history of syncope right no sir he did not give any history of syncope basically there will be history of pre syncope and exertion very rarely patient all completely present with syncope if there is an there is basically it is an exertional syncope then i will explain the mechanism of syncope in as mechanism of syncope uh, it is yes. because of the fixed car fixed cardiac output sir in uh, when patient exerts there is no the cardiac output cannot increase according to the exertion so there will be a transient uh, reduction in the cerebral blood flow with, and that which is causing syncope with loss of postural tone sir so only is a fixed cardiac output so syncope can be due to exertional or it can be rest in aortic stenosis if it is exertional as you told because of inadequate increase in cardiac output during exertion which will, and second thing is there will be a malfunction of baroreceptor mechanism in aortic stenotic patients third thing the vasodepressor response to increase left ventricular systolic pressure during exercise okay there is a malfunction of baroreceptor so all this mechanism leads to if there is a syncope at rest right you need to rule out arrhythmias in the form of atrial fibrillation and all these patients are elderly patient no so degeneration of aortic stenosis as it happens there will be conduction system disturbance also so the patients can have av block also so the syncope at the exercise or syncope at rest if it is exercise i told you the mechanism because of inadequate increase in cardiac output to exertion or the baroreceptor mechanism all function if it is during the rest always rule up think of atrial fibrillation or it can be due to av block so basically Uh, in aortic stenosis, the, if there is a history of chest pain, there is basically there is that itself tells you there is a severe LVH, and there is a demand supply mismatch. If there is a this, if patient is giving a history of heart apnea, PND, it increases. There is an increased grossly elevated left ventricular end diastolic pressure, which leads to increased LA pressure, which leads to pulmonary arterial pressure increase. Okay. Third thing you told is there is no history of syncope, right? Okay. Yes, sir. What other relevant history you want to tell me here? You told there is no history of weakness of limb when, right? Yes, sir. Now, what is the importance here? Sir, that is our uh, to rule to rule out if there is any focal neurological deficit because of embolism. Sir, in if the patient is in uh, is having some arrhythmia, then there can be a left atrial thrombus, which can dislodge and cause uh, neurological thrombus. Like why the why there is left atrial thrombus here? Uh, because of uh, outstanding why? arrhythmia. long standing here your patient is having okay that i will come back again you just remind me when you do tell your examination time is basically the microthrombi in this especially in bicuspid aortic valve patients there are a lot of degenerations happen especially degenerative this microthrombi can embolize as well as the calcium can embolize so microthrombi or calcium can embolize and leads to transient ischemic attack or stroke right Okay. Imagine you, uh, if there is history of GI bleed, what will be your diagnosis here? And uh, long-standing AS angio dysplasia of the colon can occur, sir. What Which is AD syndrome? What is AD syndrome? H e y d e s. AD syndrome. AD syndrome. Ah, uh, H e y d e s. AD syndrome. Not. Sure. It's Not a combination of aortic stenosis, angio dysplasia of colon, and acquired pyoglobulopathy. So anemia, triple A anemia, aortic stenosis, and acquired pyoglobulopathy. That is acquired one millimeter of this disease. See, so if there is history of GI bleed in the AS. You think of it. Just the completion sake, I told that. So now you are able to understand the mechanism of chest pain in AS, dyspnea in yes, AS, sir. syncope in AS. Okay. Is there any doubt regarding this? No, sir. Understood. Okay. Okay. What you you are told about voice change dyspnea? Why it is important here? Uh, voice change and dysphagia is seen in uh, uh, when there is left atrial enlargement, which can compress the like recurrent laryngeal nerve or the esophagus. Sir. So for that, we we'll ask for voice change and dysphagia. Okay, but that is uh, in the presence of uh, you told it's aortic. It's extremely unless a very severe aortic stenosis like going into a uh, uh, terminal end complication. Why there is history of you told history of. 
swelling of legs abdominal distension what do you want to what are you trying to tell you there is swelling of legs abdominal distension what will be diagnosis here uh, right ventricular failure sir symptoms of right ventricular failure sir hmm orthopnea pnd is a symptom of left, left ventricular failure okay there is no reduce output and fatigability okay there is no history of fatigability yeah huh? are you sure ஒருத்தோட்டிக் <laughs> so uh, how much percentage can be involved in mitral mitral or can be involved in rheumatic heart disease that is the most common case will be kept in exam this is what you are presenting mostly it will be a short case actually uh, okay yes, you just sir. tell me how much percentage of involvement of mitral valve in rheumatic heart disease how much percentage is aortic valve that is very important we will come back again how much is mixed aortic and aortic mitral valve just for uh, teaching you generally 70 to 75% of the patients will have predominant aortic mitral valve mixed will be okay. around 20 to 25% and pure aortic will be 5 to 8% so there is a very less chance this patient is having rheumatic etiology okay that your duration is only one year with the, with a breathlessness so most probably the etiology will be degenerative okay sharan can it be bicuspid aortic valve leading to aortic stenosis here uh, it will present it uh, earlier age group uh, that is yeah uh, here the history is a clue the family history is a clue you told there is no significant family history here Yes, sir. Now, what is what could be the etiology? It is not rheumatic, definitely, right? Yes, sir. If it uh, because your duration it started around only seventy four years, then the guy is seventy five year old, yeah. Now, yes, can sir. it be this one? In the seventh or uh, eighth decade, degenerative causes only we can consider, sir. If it was a decade mm-hmm. earlier, we can consider bicuspid aortic. Generally, valve. okay, right. I'll come back to you again. That's uh, that. That's why I asked you. Generally, uh, bicuspid aortic valve presents at fifty to seventy years of age. more than 70 years yes still it can present it's no more most often it is degenerative even more than 70 years 40% of bicuspidal people can present with stenotic lesion as you told degenerative or decade later but if bicuspidal predominantly uh, 50 to 70 years who is most commonly affected by bicuspidal male or female male ஒரு and other significant uh, cardiac histories like uh, ischemic heart disease uh, has a genetic predisposition and also other uh, congenital lesions which can progress to degenerative conditions like bicuspid aortic valve will have family history sir and uh, history of sudden cardiac death uh, is usually seen in young patients like uh, history of uh, uh, hyper- hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy sir which is uh, which is also of a uh, form of uh, left ventricular aortic valve only this uh, uh, bicuspid aortic valve is you know Which valvular heart disease can present with sudden cardiac death in your ED? In your ED? Yes. Ah, oh, aortic stenosis. No, why? <laughs> Severe AS can cause sudden cardiac death. Any other thing? Mitral risk stenosis, regurgitation, or present with heart failure most of the times. And arrhythmias will be the most common okay, presentation. Sir. This one. So the bottom line is any elderly patient. unexplained heart failure all uh, unexplained heart failure always rolled aortic stenosis that is the most important bottom line i like to tell you so now the patient is presenting with chest pain and breathing difficulty so the yeah, okay that's what i want to discuss about history sir anybody 
Hello, ma'am. Hello. Sharo. Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you tell the causes for chest pain, like respiratory origin and uh, cardiac origin? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so cardiac uh, causes of chest pain can be uh, have a coronary vascular circulation uh, involving like myocardial infarction, unstable angina, and chronic stable angina, and also valvular diseases like atrial stenosis and mitral stenosis. Ma'am. And uh, respiratory causes of uh, chest pain can be. Uh, 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 airway diseases like bronchial asthma, COPD can also present with chest pain and all, uh, sorry, parenchymal diseases like uh, pneumonia, uh, uh, lung fibrosis with uh, plur plural involvement, pleuritis can also present with chest pain, ma'am. And then uh, gastrointestinal causes like diffuse esophageal spasm, uh, GERD, uh, peptic ulcer disease are gastrointestinal causes of uh, chest pain, ma'am. Okay, okay. So, uh, can you tell how to differentiate based on the characteristic features? This is cardiac origin, respiratory, and gastric, even the dermatological uh, lesion is the etiology for chest pain. Is there any characteristic feature to differentiate? Yes, ma'am. Angina is a uh, uh, cardiac chest pain is usually retrosternal and it cannot be localized to a particular point, ma'am. It is retrosternal and diffuse type of pain, whereas respiratory pain is usually localized and it is more peripheral. The patient can be able to tell where the pain is, ma'am. And in respiratory involvement, the pain worsens typically on inspiration and it will be associated with other features like wheezing, fever, cough, with expectoration, ma'am. And uh, gastric, gastrointestinal pain is mostly, it can be localized to the upper epigastrium and it will have a relation with food, ma'am. Either it will be aggravated or relieved after food intake. And uh, skin lesions will usually present uh, the shingles prior to the appearance of skin lesions. They will have a burning and paresthesia sensation type of pain on one uh, particular side of the chest according to one dermatomal distribution. So that can uh, so it gives us a clue that it could be a dermatological pain, ma'am. Okay. So, okay. so, uh, so uh, that's the reason for always you need to inspect the chest wall before you come to the conclusion of the uh, causes for the chest pain because sometimes because of the herpes uh, zoster lesion, dermatological lesion, you need to note it down. So what is the dermatome actually for chest pain, classical of anginal? What is the dermatomal pattern of distribution? Of anginal chest pain, ma'am? Yes, yes. How, how it will radiate anginal chest pain? <laughs> Not sure, ma'am. Not sure. It, it radiates into, to the left side of the shoulder and along the ulnar border of the, uh, the What is the root value? What is the root value? C C7. C7, C8, T1. Okay. So, the, what are the sites it will radiate? It radiates to the neck jaw into the left shoulder and then along uh, radiates down the left arm uh, it ex can extend up to the ulnar border of the left arm okay okay and also whenever you will uh, get a case of chest pain so you should ask any is radiating to the back okay so, so center of the back of the chest okay so what okay. will you suspect aortic dissection ma'am aortic okay that also you keep in mind okay whenever there is a radiating pain so interscapular region, is there any radiation or tearing pain? So you should ask. You know, suddenly they will collapse. Okay. Okay. Saren? Yes, yes, sir. What is nocturnal angina? Nocturnal angina uh, is seen in uh, aortic regurgitation, sir. Mm -hmm. So because of, uh, in, during the night, uh, when the because of the parasympathetic activity, the bradycardia will, uh, the patient will be in bradycardia and because of the longer duration of the diastole, the runoff, uh, the backflow will be increased and so the patient will uh, reduce coronary perfusion, will cause chest pain, sir. So it is seen in AR? AR, sir, uh, aortic regurgitation. So now you tell me, now you have answered so many questions and it's been very good. Now, the thing is, uh, now you tell me whether it's uh, predominant with your history, whether it is, what do you want to find out, whether it's a predominant stenotic lesion or predominant regulated lesion, or you still want to put your money on balanced lesion. That is, mixture of both ASAR, chest pain, breathlessness, rule out ischemic heart disease. Definitely, this guy has to be ruled out, worked out for coronary artery disease, first of all. 
second thing uh, whether it's a predominant stenotic lesion or predominant degenerative lesion it could be a balanced that uh, uh, both of the regurgitant and stenotic lesions will present with chest pain and uh, dyspnea sir but mm. uh, palpitations oh. are seen more in uh, regurgitant lesions sir Patient does not oh, have any problem. It's always a real because pounding sensation. Actually, the most common presentation will be pounding of chest. Patient will come with pounding chest sensation. Especially palpitation would have been a predominant complaint if it is a chronic AR, severe AR. Okay, sir. Okay. Now we need to rule out. That means you need to tell you also, we want to rule out balanced lesion in your examination. Correct? Okay. okay so sir. now we are able to understand the chest pain, breathing difficulty, syncope. All of the yes. negative ones. Madam also told non-cardiac chest pain evaluation is very important. Not everything is cardiac. Especially elderly patient, all his lung disorders, everything has to be ruled out. If it is acute onset chest pain, what will be your diagnosis here? What will be your differential diagnosis? Acute onset chest pain is breathlessness in elderly patient. Acute onset chest pain. A 90 year old male patient today presents to your velour casualty with acute onset chest pain with breathlessness. What are the differential diagnosis you want? This is a chronic pain, no? Yes, sir. Pain. Uh, Acute onset pain uh, mostly differentiate between cardiac and respiratory, sir. In cardiac, uh, uh, it's it's cardiac causes for acute yes, onset chest pain. Acute coronary syndrome, sir. Then uh, aortic dissection. Then uh, Sir, uh, previously Sarah was telling one common condition that presents to ED. So any acute onset chest pain presenting to ED always the rule of ischemic ACS, then you'll be your aortic dissection, then you'll be your acute pulmonary embolism, the fourth will be your acute pericarditis from cardiac side. Okay, sir. Okay. So this patient you need to rotate uh, is presenting a long term but short duration pain. That these are all the possibilities you need to think of cardiac. So any ACS patient always rotate aortic dissection. Any acute chest pain always rotate these four possibilities from cardiac okay. side. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, yes. good. Hi, Dr. Sharan, I am yes, audible. Sir. I came late yes, actually. Sir. Yeah, I came late actually. So, actually, when a patient present with breathlessness, okay, by seeing the pattern of breathlessness, can you see which system is involved? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you are seeing a you are in casualty, your patient is coming with breathlessness. Okay, by yes, seeing sir. the pattern of breathlessness, can you say which system is involved? Yes, sir. It's possible. How do, how to see. Do you, yeah, how do you, what is the, based on the pattern of breathing, how do you say which system is involved? Sir, uh, in the cardiac uh, causes, it will be rapid, uh, shallow breathing, sir. Okay. What are the systems can be involved when the patient is breathing fast? Cardiac and uh, respiratory and CNS uh, can be involved when the patient is uh, breathing fast, sir. Other systems? Central nervous system, sir, and metabolic causes like hyperventilation. Acidosis. Yes, sir. Okay. So, okay, sir. just seeing the pattern of breathing, how to locate which system is involved? Suppose if it is a renal failure, wherein yes, lungs sir. will be clear. Okay. Yes, sir. So, what, uh, what is the pattern of breathing? Uh, in renal failure, it will be acidotic type of breathing, sir. Yeah, it will be deep and hurried. Deep, uh, deep hurried. So it will be deep and hurried, okay? If it okay, is a sir. renal failure. If it is a cardiorespiratory, shallow and rapid. Okay, sir. So just by seeing the pattern of breathing, you can say which system is involved, whether it's shallow and rapid or deep and hurried, just by inspection. Okay, sir. Okay. What is called orthodeoxia? Uh, deoxygenation, when the patient is in the... Uh, sitting or the upright uh, position, sir? Sitting and upright. Orthodeoxia means desaturation in erect posture. Yes, sir. Comfortable lying down, which is just opposite to orthopenia. What is orthopenia? Is a patient is dyspneic uh, in lying down. Yeah. Here it is just opposite to orthopenia is orthodeoxia. Okay, sir. So patient is having uh, desaturation in erect posture. We call it Platypenia, okay. Platypenia. What are the conditions for uh, for the what are the conditions of orthodeoxia? When do you have orthodeoxia? Hepatic and myxoma, hepatopulmonary syndrome. Okay, left atrial thrombus also. Okay. Okay, sir. 
So what is the mechanism of orthopnea and PNT? Orthopnea is a dyspnea which occurs in the recumbent position and is relieved by sitting up or using pillows, sir. Orthopnea is because of, uh, in, the, in the daytime, because of standing effect and the effect of gravity, there's a shift of fluid from the intravascular to the interstitial space. But during uh, night, when the patient uh, goes to the recumbent position, there's a shifting of fluid back into the intravascular space, which increases the venous return, sir. So that is a mechanism for orthopnea. So when the shift occurs being... immediately? Yes, sir. Uh, shift occurs within yeah. 30 minutes. Uh, it takes around 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Shift uh, in orthopnea. Actually, it, uh, orthopnea is due to when you eliminate gravity, there is increased venous return. Yes, sir. Okay, there is increase because of elimination of gravity, there is increase in venous return to the heart. So it occurs immediately. Okay, sir. So what is the mechanism of orthopnea means? Number one is there is since elimination of gravity, there is increase in venous return to the heart. Number one, number two, when the patient lies down, the diaphragm is moved upward, so the vital capacity of lung is reduced. Number two, number three, when the patient lies down, the posterior part of the chest is splinted. Okay, major part of lung is posterior only when compared to anteriorly. So since it is splinted, the patient begins breathlessness. Okay, these are causes for orthopenia. Okay, sir. What is the mechanism of PNT is shift of fluid from interstitial to intravascular, increase in venous return, causing breathless. That is the mechanism for uh, PND. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. So if a patient is a patient with respiratory disease and cardiovascular disease will have uh, breathlessness, is there any uh, clue to say that whether it is respiratory or cardiovascular primarily? Yes, sir. Uh, PND uh, is specific for cardiac. Uh... Breathless, uh, breathlessness and patient has PND is more specific for cardiac, sir. Okay. Anything else? Anything, any other way to differentiate primarily cardiac, primarily respiratory? Uh, uh, the order of symptoms, sir. In uh, primary cardiac, uh, dyspnea precedes uh, cough and uh, expectation, sir. Whereas in primary respiratory, cough and expectation in will precede dyspnea. Sir. Next. Then, then, uh, the pulse or uh, pulse uh, difference will be there, sir. In uh, LV, in uh, cardiac cause, the patient may have, in failure, the patient may have pulses alternance, sir. Mm. In respiratory cause, the patient will have uh, pulses paradoxes, sir. And then... Sir, okay. Actually, one is uh, PND is in favor of uh, cardiovascular, okay? Okay, sir. PND is in favor of cardiovascular. Next is cardiorespiratory exercise testing has to be done. If you want to differentiate whether it's cardiovascular or respiratory, you have to go for cardiorespiratory exercise testing. Ask the patient to walk. Okay. Okay, sir. That will be in COVID. No. COVID, what we did before discharge? Six minutes uh, walk test, sir. We did in COVID before discharge. Okay, sir. What we did, ma? What in the border? Six minute walk six, test. Six minute Sarah. walk test. Yeah, we did a six minute walk test, no? Yes, sir. To look for any desaturation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. COVID. Okay. So the cardiorespiratory exercise, when there's a desaturation, it's respiratory. When there's a change in pulse and BP, it's cardiovascular. Cardiorespiratory exercise testing will differentiate cardiovascular primarily or uh, respiratory. Okay. Okay. When sir. A, okay. Sometimes in uh, surgical call over, they will call you for post LSCS or post laparotomy, patients having breathlessness. Okay. So yes, how will you evaluate that? For immediate post operative day one. They will call you. Okay, patient is having uh, breathlessness. Patient is breathing fast. Rate is 28 or 27 like that. They will call you. Immediate post-operative period. Yes, sir. What uh, are the causes? The patient is having a pre uh, history of immobilization. We will ask for history of chest pain, sir. We have to suspect uh, pulmonary thromboembolism. Okay, number one is pulmonary thromboembolism. Yes. Next. Uh, an adequate analgesia, whether uh, an adequate analgesia is being given, sir. Good. Okay. So, suppose a laparotomy pain will, uh, patient cannot take a deep breathing. Even in case of an acute butcher, if you see, the patient will have a tender hepatomegaly. Because of tender hepatomegaly, patient cannot take a deep breath. Okay. He will be okay. Sh shallow breathing will be there. The rate of breathing will be higher. Okay. So, similarly, when you have a chest pain, for example, pleurisy, pleuritic pain in pneumonia, the patient will breathe faster because he cannot take a deep breath. Okay. Okay, sir. So, so the deep whenever he takes a deep breath, he the pain gets aggravated, so he breathes fast. Okay. So acute okay. butchery in uh, pneumonia with the pleurisy, 
those conditions you can see the patient will be breathing fast and even laparotomy also the first thing is post operative patient breathing fast number one is pulmonary embolism to be ruled out post lscs or post uh, general surgery when the surgery was done post operative period the blood pressure is there first thing is ruled out pulmonary embolism okay next is whether adequate analgesia has been given or not when the pain is there we cannot breathe fast the patient will breathe fast when the pain is there patient cannot take a deep breath and the patient will breathe fast okay okay sir that is in, you can see in post operative patients you can see that okay they are called surgical okay. or ogi call over they are calling okay so what is bronchial asthma and cardiac asthma the cardiac asthma is uh, in the, the breathlessness which occurs because of the left ventricular failure pnd is the cardiac asthma sir and bronchial asthma is respiratory cause because of uh, airway hyper responsiveness sir so then what is the age, age? In PN, uh, in cardiac asthma, it occurs around two, uh, two in the middle of two point five to three hours after sleeping, sir. Whereas the bronchial asthma occurs in the early hours of the morning, sir. And cardiac asthma will be relieved by sitting up, hanging the legs down, or uh, going near the window when the patient ventilates. It will be, it will improve, sir. Whereas bronchial asthma improves only after medications uh, like bronchodilators. Sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is the pulse in both conditions? Pulse in both conditions. Pulse in uh, cardiac asthma is pulses alternance, sir, because it's a uh, cause occurs in left ventricular failure. Whereas in uh, respiratory causes, there will be pulses paradoxes, sir. Sure, okay. So first symptom is breathless. Second is chest pain, na, for you. Second, then second chest pain. Yes, yes, sir. Chest second pain for one year and okay. breathlessness for the past twelve months, sir. So what are, what is called angina equivalent? Angina equivalents are uh, uh, syncope palpitations. Diaphoresis, other symptoms of uh, uh, nausea. All of these are the angina equivalents, sir. Fatigue also, okay, fatigue. Okay, sir. Okay, these conditions are similar to angina, even though they are not there. Okay, this you can okay. see in elderly patient, patient with uh, uh, autonomic neuropathy patients, diabetic autonomic neuropathy patient can have. Uh, uh, they will be presenting with uh, less uh, just discomfort. Okay, they, they won't have a classical uh, myocardial pain. Patient with an elderly geriatric age group, patient with the cardiac autonomic neuropathy patients, they won't have a classical uh, the retrosternal radiating those things. They're just a mild discomfort with the fatigue, uh, okay, with the palpitation, with breathlessness, okay. So those patients also should not, or uh, you should uh, rule out MI, okay. Okay, sir. And inferior volume can present as abdominal pain also, epigastric pain also. Yet typical okay. presentation of MI, this okay, pain, sir. myocardial pain. So, okay. okay so, you know, a patient with cardiac risk factor is there, patient with the epigastric discomfort also, it should rule out uh, inferior MI. Okay. Okay, sir. Proceed. Anything else, you can proceed to examination. If nothing is there. Sharon? Yes, ma'am. Since you told is a one year history, so yes, the chest pain, okay. So can you tell me the duration of the pay, uh, pain and then related to the etiology? For example, the pain within seconds, minutes, hours, month, and uh, year. Can you tell two to etiology for each duration? Yes, ma'am. Pain which is developing over a few minutes is a uh, few minutes to hours is usually because of acute exacerbation of. Uh, bronchial asthma, acute exacerbation of COPD, and other uh, cardiac causes will be acute coronary syndrome. Okay. And then pain which is uh, developing over a uh, few weeks to few weeks can be uh, seen in uh, the respiratory conditions like uh, pneumonia, ma'am. Mm. Okay. And pain which is uh, more long-lasting duration is seen in uh, pulmonary hypertension. Then other valvular uh, diseases also can cause uh, chronic pain, ma'am. Okay. Because you told for one year, is there any variation in the characteristic feature or the same characteristic features? Is there any worsening or improving the progression? How is the progression of your case? Characteristic of so chest pain. Initially, uh, initially, he was able to, because my, uh, he has, as per he said, he was able to, uh, manage the pain with some painkillers, ma'am. But as the day uh, progressed for the past uh, two months and especially in the last week, it has it has, it has worsened, ma'am. 
okay so for that you can uh, mention uh, like that okay so the okay, uh, severity of the pain is worsened for the last one month or two month but it's uh, chronic for the last one year so and also i want to tell that a uh, few points suppose mm-hmm. uh, the pain due to the angina mostly it will last for 2 to 10 minutes okay and in in case of the acute mi related chest pain is more than uh, 30 minutes and as you told the characteristic features and the aortic stenosis how it will be the characteristic of chest pain since you are discussing elderly age group chest pain due to aortic stenosis while the heart disease how will be the characteristic pain is a recurrent aortic episode stenosis is more, yes ma'am recurrent episode and recurrent. it is uh, classically on exertion exertional angina ma'am yeah okay the triad what is the triad aortic stenosis triad is exertional angina syncope and uh, syncope and dyspnea okay so in pericarditis how will be the pain chest pain in pericarditis in pericarditis uh, it will be central pain which is uh, relieved by uh, bending forward okay is also hours to days pericarditis infections related sometimes is a episodic and sharp pain so you told for anginal pain is a false localizing and radiating something like that here it is a pericarditis a sharp pain and retrosternal most of the time it uh, refer to the left shoulder okay but it is relieved by sitting up and leaning forward okay that is more classical for the pericarditis okay so the postural variation uh, the relief of pain means you think of pericarditis in aortic dissection how will be the pain ripping tearing apart pain ma'am and the patient will be having will be hemodynamically unstable the pain will be radiating to the back yeah okay and also is associated with the uncontrolled hypertension and so you need to think of other etiologies like a marfan syndrome or any tamponade and all these things in pulmonary embolism what is a classical feature in pulmonary embolism chest pain patient will be having uh, associated sim- symptoms of mm. na- nausea okay mm. so there will be abrupt onset the onset will be the patient will be doing well sudden abrupt onset of the pain minutes to hours so and also is a pleuritic origin always associated with the dyspnea tachypnea tachycardia and hypotension there will be a classical of hypotension in the pulmonary embolism now it's clear so yes, you should know the each and uh, every etiology what is the characteristic and associated features and location okay now you proceed you proceed to the general examination yes ma'am our patient is conscious oriented dyspneic at rest afebrile there is no pallor icterus cyanosis clubbing generalized lymphadenopathy or pedal edema His height is 152 cm, weight is 65 kg, his BMI is 28.1 overweight. There are no markers of congenital heart disease, no markers of infective endocarditis, no markers of rheumatic heart disease, no external markers of tuberculosis. Vital signs, the pulse rate is 85 beats per minute, rhythm is regular, it's a low volume pulse, normal in character, condition of vessel wall is normal, it is felt in all peripheral pulses, there is no radio-radial or radio-femoral delay. The BP in the right upper limb is 180 mm of mercury in the sitting position. In the left upper limb, it is 180 mm of mercury. In the right and the left lower limb, the systolic blood pressure is 120 mm of mercury. The temperature is 98.4 degree Fahrenheit taken in the oral. Uh, SpO2 is 98 percentage in room air. The respiratory rate is 20 breaths per minute, abdominal thoracic type. The JVP is not elevated. CVS examination. Inspection. The chest wall is symmetrical. General yes, examination. Sir. Go to pulse. Yes, sir. So generally, if you want to make a clinical diagnosis of cardiovascular system, I yes, frequently sir. used to say that keep your stethoscope away and say to yourself that you are going to diagnose the patient before auscultation. Okay, you are you are going to diagnose the predominant lesion before auscultation. Okay, that is the target. So whenever you examine the patient, your target will be you are going to make a clinical diagnosis. Hello, sir. Second. 
was before auscultation and by auscultation okay this is a target okay yes sir hello yes sir yes sir I, uh, can you repeat the question? Yeah, actually, actually, the clinical examination of cardiovascular system, first, if you want to make clinical diagnosis, first thing yes. is, your target must be, you must be able to diagnose the predominant lesion before auscultation. Okay, sir. Auscultation is meant only for confirming the diagnosis and to pick up minimal lesions. Yes, sir. Got it. So pulse yes. itself, by the by the yes. time you say the pulse itself, you should say yes. what are the possible diagnosis, possible diagnosis when you say pulse. Yes, sir. From the pulse, so from the pulse, what are the possible diagnoses? Yes, sir. And the pulse is uh, low volume pulse. Yes, the pulse, uh, you have not mentioned which are which artery you have measured. All these data you are given, no. You are given the rate, rhythm, volume. Uh, from which artery you have taken all this data? Yes, sir. Sir, for from rate and artery? rhythm, from rate and rhythm, it's taken from the radial artery, sir. The volume uh -huh. character uh, uh, is seen in the carotid artery, sir. So which side, right side or left side? Both sides. You have seen both sides, huh? Sir, okay. Here from the pulse, what are the possible uh, possible differential diagnosis? Yes, sir. From low volume pulses, you should see in stenotic patients, sir. Whereas okay. high volume pulses, see a large volume pulse is seen in regurgitant patients, sir. And then and the specific out. character of the pulse. Yeah, large volume we get in regurgitation shunt also. Okay, VSD PDA also. Okay, next. Uh. Okay, hmm. Then based character? on the char character of the pulse also, we can uh, identify the uh, lesion, sir. Hmm. Like in uh, some specific pulse, like the uh, uh, anacrotic pulse, which is slow rising and late peaking, is seen in severe AS, sir. Hmm. And. Uh, other characters of the pulses are like pulses experience which is seen in AR and combined AS with AR, sir. Mm. Can you see bisperience in AS? Yes. Uh, bisperience pulse is seen in uh, combined AS with AR can, uh, can see can see bisperience like, pulse. In which type of AS you have bisperience pulse? AS can uh, be valvular. Valvular AS, sir. Actually, bisperience in subvalvular. Subvalvular. Okay, sir. Yeah, bisphenes is seen in sub okay? Okay, sir. Okay, next. From the pulse, diagnosis from the pulse. Uh, then based on the rhythm uh, of the pulse, sir, of character, sir. Okay, can you say something about pulses paradoxes? Yes, sir. Pulses paradoxes is uh, an inspiratory uh, rise in systolic pressure of more than 10 millimeter of mercury is pulses paradox, uh, pulses paradox, sir. Repeat. Sorry, exaggerated, sorry, sir, an exaggerated fall in the uh, systolic blood pressure during inspiration is uh, pulses paradox, sir. Above how much? Above uh, 10 millimeter of mercury, sir. Sir, okay, normally the BP falls during inspiration, the exaggerated fall is pulses. How will you demonstrate clinically? So we have to, uh, after uh, tying the uh, BP cuff, uh, we have to inflate up to 20 millimeter of mercury above the systolic blood pressure and then uh, and then reduce the blood, blood pressure, sir. Initially, the Korakoff sound will be heard only on expiration, sir. Then after uh, re releasing more, it will come down and another Korakoff sound will be heard during inspiration and expiration, sir. The difference between the both, if it is more than 10 millimeter of mercury, then it is uh, pulses paradoxes, sir. Good, good, very good. Nice, nice. Okay, next, anything in uh, pulse from pulse? Any other characters? Uh, dichrotic pulse, sir, which, okay. is, uh, which has two peaks in systole, one, one peak in systole and one peak no, in no. dichrotic. Uh -huh. So, actually, whenever you have an uh, ectopic beats, okay, you have a compensatory pass and there will be increase in the stroke volume, okay. But yes, in sir. AS, what will happen? Hydrostenosis? Will there be an increased stroke volume in ectopics? Following ectopics? Actually, yeah, ectopic will follow the stroke uh, compensatory pass. Yes, sir. Yeah, the stroke volume will increase subsequently, you know, generally. Okay, in uh, valvular AS, will there be increase in the uh, stroke volume after ectopic? You call a fixed no. cardiac output, no, there won't be increase in volume, okay? Okay, sir. This is a fixed cardiac output, no? So there won't okay, be any sir. increase following an ectopic, there won't be any increase in the pulse volume. Okay, sir. Okay. Sharon? Yes, sir. 
the imagine the heart rate is 40 what do you want to load we will take one by one if you imagine the heart rate is 40 what do you want to load here heart rate is 35 40 what do you want to load here to roll out a complete heart block with idioventricular rhythm sir because your age is 75 years no yes sir okay fine if the rhythm is irregular what do you want to roll out here the rhythm is irregular. Uh, rhythm is regular, if the rhythm is irregular, what do you want to roll out here? Irregular rhythm means you have to roll out arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation, sir. And if it is uh, irregularly regular, other uh, atrial tachyarrhythmias with variable AV block or fixed AV block, ectopic. If the rhythm is irregular, you want to, what do you want to roll out? In this patient with a history of chest pain of one year with working diagnosis of ischemic heart disease or with the working diagnosis of left-sided lesion, predominantly IOT. You told no. Rhythm is regular. How will you explain here? Because you, you, of uh, virus, almost you ruled out mitral, no? Yes, sir. Mm. Most commonly, atrial fibrillation, no? Because of the increased left ventricular dimension, there is left atrial enlargement. These are all terminal stage, actually. Right? Okay, you told sir. it's low volume. Are you sure the character is only normal? Sharon, you told it is low volume. Yes, sir. That means your lesion should be? A stenotic lesion, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, what it would be mild, moderate, or severe. Definitely it is not mild, no? So definitely no, the character sir. is normal. Huh? There is no special character like whisperance, anything. Actually. Right, huh? What I'm telling you, you will it's understand. Sir, you told uh, there is uh, your palpation is low volume. You yes, told sir. the character is normal. Yes, sir. Uh, you need to find out what is happening because uh, when will you get low volume? Unless it is moderate to almost like severe, only you will get low volume. Fixed output, you already told. So the character mm -hmm. you told is normal. What is the important the condition of vessel wall? Condition of vessel wall in uh, atherosclerosis, there will be thickening of the artery, sir. So that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You told all peripheral pulse are felt. What is the importance yes, here? Again, you want to peripheral peripheral major, yes, sir. Peripheral arterial diffusion uh, there may be in uh, there may be absent uh, peripheral pulses, sir. What happens in aortic valve in this age that happens in the convection system? What happens in the aortic valve here happens in the coronary system. Almost similar things will happen in the peripheral vascular system also. That's why, if you're, for example, if you're going to manage this main patient through a trans, like an arterial access route, we are able to manage, you know, these are all very important. If you're able to buy, you will all the bilateral femoral artery equally, that is very important. Radial artery is equally. Every artery you are filling is, tells us the condition of vessel wall is almost healthy. That is very important here in this age group. No okay. radial radial and radial femoral artery. Okay, fine. So this is the importance of rate with respect to whatever you are presented. So if it's bratty, it's extremely If it is tacky, that tells you the heart is failure. But I don't know why you told us low volume, but you told character is normal. Okay, let's go back and come. Sharon, go to general examination. First slide, first slide. Yes, sir. Sharon, you, you told patient is Disney address, huh? you are sure, huh? Why is it dysnic at rest? Is in, that means he has presented to the uh, to our hospital in heart failure, right? Yes, sir. Correct, huh? You, yes, you examine this patient during heart failure or recovery from heart failure and in stable condition. He, all, he was recovering from heart failure, sir. Okay, right. So, okay, go. We'll see. Previous examination. On inspection, the chest wall is symmetrical, shaped normal. Trachea seems to be in the midline. Apical pulsations are visible in the left fifth intercostal space, 0.5 cm medial to the mid clavicular line. No other visible pulsations, no precordial bulge, no scars or sinuses, no dilated vein. On palpation, tracheal position is confirmed to be in the midline. Epical impulse site is in the left fifth intercostal space, 0.5 cm medial to the midclavicular line. It is heaving type, not associated with thrill. There is no parasternal heave, no palpable P2, and no palpable thrill. Percussion, heart borders are within normal limits. The left heart border corresponds to the apex. 
The right heart border corresponds to the right sternal border. Liver dullness in the fifth intercostal space. Right and left second intercostal spaces are regional. Auscultation uh, in the aortic area, the first and second heart sounds are heard. S2 is soft, it's a single S2 is heard. A crescendo, decrescendo, ejection, systolic murmur of grade 3, best heard with the diaphragm of the stethoscope, with the breath held in expiration is present. Murmur is radiating to the carotid as well as to the mitral area where it is heard as a systolic murmur. In the herbs area, the second aortic area, a high pitch decrescendo, early diastolic murmur, best heard with the diaphragm of the stethoscope with the patient leaning forward and the breath held in expiration is heard. In the pulmonary area, first and second heart sounds are heard. S2 is normal intensity, it is single, no splitting, no murmurs, no added sounds. Mitral area, first and second heart sounds are heard. S1 is normal intensity. A systolic murmur just heard in the aortic area is heard here with a reduced intensity, grade 2, no added sounds. Tricuspid area, first and second heart sounds are heard. S1 is normal intensity, no murmurs and no added sounds. Other systems. Um, respiratory system, normal vesicular breath sounds are heard. Bilateral fine basal palpitations are present. Abdomen, no organomegaly, no free fluid. Central nervous system examination was normal. There was no focal neurological deficit. Diagnosis, a case of acquired valvular heart disease, moderate AS with mild AR, possibly degenerative etiology, patient in sinus rhythm, and no signs of heart failure, infective endocarditis or pulmonary hypertension, patient in class 4 NYHA. Sharan? Sharan? Sir? I'll go back to your CVS examination. Sharon, you told Disney at rest, but JVP is normal. Do you accept it? You told JVP is not elevated, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> you told Disney at rest, but JVP is not elevated, right? So, okay. Okay, if it is aortic stenosis with the AR, what will what is what will be seen in you are told moderate AS? What will be finding in JVP in AS? In AS, so uh, we don't uh, generally there is no specifically actually what, what happens here now uh, from uh, just for the completion sake I am telling if there you are told JVP is not elevated in JVP there is a prominent A wave in JVP in in AS what will be what what do you want to think about? Prominent A wave in AS. Prominent A wave in AS is because of the elevated left end end diastolic pressure, which is uh, which pushes the interventricular septum to the left and uh, right, and thereby causes increase in right atrial pressure and elevation of JVP. Sir, uh, they they grossly lay hypertrophy ventricle decreases space of RV, so there will be a uh, right atrial emptying will be there will be resistance. So the AP, what is that called actually? What you told Burn is right. Ah, that's called Burnham effect. Burnham effect. So that is the only thing here you need to tell. But this near address in JVP not elevated. I don't think so. It's correlating. What is the, what is the, where you will get prominent CV wave? CV pulse is very very important. As Sarah was telling previously, you know, pulse is extremely important. Pulse okay. uh, actually what Sarah told is right. Pulse BP JVP CVS is over almost. Only you start putting a stethoscope, right? you'll get a lot of confusion. In a murmur, what murmur, what is the duration, systole, diastole, NS, other apodam. But what most of the often times we'll diagnose with BP, JVP, and pulse. Only to confirm is that to stay away, ascultate, definitely will miss cardiology case for your correct diagnosis. So your BP is 180. What do you want to tell me? So already pulse discussion over. BP is 180. What is the, what do you want to tell me? Tell us. Uh, phenotic, uh, since it's a combined valvular lesion of AS and AR, uh, uh, BP gives a clue towards the predominant lesion, sir. So okay. if it is a systolic decapitation of BP, the BP is lesser there than... There is no systolic cap decapitation, right? In your patient, the systolic blood pressure is 100. So there is no systolic decapitation, correct? Okay, sir. No significant systolic decapitation. Your pulse pressure is narrow, right? Yes, sir. Your diastolic pressure is 80. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you want to re-examine your BP? There is, you, have, you need to specifically mention here there is no peripheral signs of AR, yeah? but that tell you what your BP is already told, your diastolic is 80, but specifically, the examiner will be very fond of asking those names and all. Okay, sir. What is ill sign? 
this sign is the, the difference in the systolic blood pressure between the upper limb and the lower limb cell. The lower limb blood pressure, it's usually higher and by 20 millimeter of mercury cell. So if it is more than 20 millimeter of mercury, it is a AR, it's used to grade AR cell, mild, moderate and severe more AR More than 60 cell. is severe. More than 60 severe AR. So now the BP is 100 by 40. He comes to your ED with a BP of 100 by 70, something rise diastolic. What do you want to load the, right now in that patient? With respect to BP alone, you see a patient of 120 or 40. Now he comes to your ED with a BP of 120 or 60. Now the diastolic pressure is a little bit raised. What does it tell you in that patient? What is happening in that patient actually? His presentation would be in ED will be this near actually. Patient would have developed heart failure. So there will be a rise in diastolic pressure. Able to understand, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That so is you told me your narrow pulse pressure. That means your A should be that only 20 pulse per, 20 difference is there. So A should be yes, it's should be severe or uh, it should be almost 20 only difference is there. So A should be severe now. If you told me that there is no systolic decapitation actually, right? Okay, right. Okay, leave it. So what is what is mean arterial pressure? Mean arterial pressure. Yeah, is, what is how what, what is the normal? What is mean diastolic arterial pressure? Blood, diastolic blood pressure plus one thirds of pulse pressure is mean arterial pressure. Okay, right. Very good. Mm. Okay, right. Then why you specifically mentioned about right lower limb, left lower limb here? Uh, to check the difference between the upper limb and lower limb blood pressure. The age of the patient is forty. You present the same diagnosis. Now you tell the importance of lower limb BPL. The age of the patient is 40. Your diagnosis is AS with AR. With a. Now the B, uh, lower limb BP, what is the importance of lower limb BP in, the, in such scenario? Leave this case. I'm testing about 30, 35, or sorry, 40 to 50 age group patient. What do you want to rule out in that such, such situation? In the background of AS, AR. What are the associated heart disease with bicuspid aortic valve? If there is a patient that comes with a diagnosis of bicuspid aortic valve, what are the things you need to rule out? Hello? Yes, sir. Sharon, are you able no, to yes, understand? Sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What are the associated valve? cardiac conditions is associated with bicuspid aortic valve? There will be aortopathy. And okay, similarly, sir. you need to rule out coarctation of iota. Okay, sir. Because periodic well, coarctation of iota. Okay, Hello? Sir. You yes, understand? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. BP is lunar, you, yeah. especially in whatever the age group I told. Okay. But the, if it is severe coarctation, they present earlier, actually. You will be able, able to diagnose. Able to understand, huh? Yes, sir. Able to understand, sir. Coarctation so, should be the same. periodic well, whether the predominant, most of the times it can be stenotic. Uh, most of the things can be air, depending upon the leaflet tissue and the prolapse happens significantly, they present a significant air. If it is not a such scenario, they present a significant AS. So any bicuspid aortic valve, iotopathy has to be evaluated in such scenario, especially coarctation of iota also. Can it be uh, supravalar AS? Um, supravalar AS, uh, the, there will be beep blood pressure difference between the right upper limb and the left upper limb, say. Hmm. There is a BP, BP And also the pulse no, volume will be different. Usually a clue, no? So yes, dev, and the age group also is not fitting, no? Yes, sir. So, uh, you told dyspnea at rest and your saturation is 98%. Accepted, huh? Accepted, huh? And your respiratory rate is only 20. Accepted, huh? Just find out that one. Just leave it. Next slide. Next slide. You are you are told uh, uh, apical impulse in the left. They can you uh, can you tell the normal apical how the normal apical impulse will be? Define yeah, apical impulse. The uh, apical impulse is defined as the lowermost and the outermost point of the definite cardiac impulse, which maximum, is uh, maximum cardiac impulse. Okay. Hmm. Cardiac impulse, which is felt as a perpendicular thrust in the palpating finger with a slight in early systole with a slight medial refraction in mid to late systole sir. So normally okay. the apical impulse site is the left fifth intercostal space, one to two centimeters medial to the mid clavicular line, 
uh, it occupies uh, less than 2.5 centimeter square area and it extends uh, less than 50 percentage of the stall here. Okay, your apical impulse is heaving, right? Yes, sir. What are the other what are the other types of apical impulse? The other types of apical impulse are uh, tapping apical impulse. Which tapping is, is seen in mitral stenosis and, and hyperdynamic. And so hyperdynamic impulse tells the vision is stenotic actually, correct? Yes, sir. If it is hyperdynamic, it will be downward, outward, occupying more than one space and all. No other visible pulsation. What are the visual pulsation you expected in your case? In this case, you told no other visible uh, pulsation. What are the what uh, what pulsation look here? Sir, uh, pulsations in the aortic area. Huh. Parasternal suprasternal. Parasternal suprasternal pulsations and yeah, yeah, air. Yeah. Significant air. Love these pulsations and all, no? Mm. Significant AR and uh, carotid pulsations. Huh. So, there is a unique, you told a uh, degenerative AS here. No, specifically, you can mention actually that. Okay. What, so what is the importance of chest wall deformity here? If it is younger age group presenting with aortic validation, what will be your primary diagnosis? Ma'am also told the diagnosis actually. If it is a chest wall, what is the importance of chest wall here? In the setting of aortic validation, especially in the younger age group. What do you want to rule out? What will be your working diagnosis? You told chest wall is symmetrical normal. If the chest wall is deformed, deformity in the chest wall, in the younger age group presenting the aortic validation, what will be your working diagnosis? Sir, in Marfan's... Uh... No, no, Marfan's syndrome, no. What is the criteria to diagnose Marfan's syndrome? There's a name, no? That everybody used to ask in exam, actually. You can't remember yes. the criteria, yes, but there is a... Huh? Gent criteria, sir. Modified, it's a modified gent, G H E N T S. Gent modified gent criteria. You will ask, actually, they asked me, <laughs> MD. Okay, right. Okay, right. So it's a heaving apex. There is chest wall is symmetrical. There is no pulsation, no pericardial bulge. What is the importance of pericardial bulge here? Pericardial, pericardial bulge, sir. Hmm. Uh, if there is a pericardial bulge, bulge, what does it tell you? It indicates a right ventricular dilation, sir, which is seen in. Uh, uh, congenital heart diseases like AS, long standing ASD can cause a uh, precordial bulge, sir. It can cause right ventricular hypertrophy and dilation, and it can cause precordial bulge. Okay. Okay, right. Okay. Dilated veins? Dilated veins are seen when there is uh, SVC or IEC obstruction can cause uh, dilated veins, sir. Okay, I'm just finding out what was your thought process when you wrote all those things. Okay, venous obstruction, you write. In such situation, what will be the JVP? If there is a venous obstruction, or what will this classically how would JVP will be described here? In the venous obstruction, it will be an elevated, but uh, it will be non-pulsatile uh, JVP. Bilaterally, it will be non-pulsatile JVP. Okay, so that is one more clue. I asked of your prominent CV wave. Where will you see prominent CV wave? Uh, prominent CV wave is seen in tricuspid regurgitation, sir. Mm, severe TR. TR. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay, fine. Very good. Then next, uh, any hello? Next slide. You. Next slide, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, next slide. So, apical impulse heaving thrill. What thrill? If there is a carotid thrill, what will be your diagnosis? Hello? Hello, sir. Yes, in sir. Examination, if there is a carotid thrill, what, what will be your diagnosis in this case? The uh, AS murmur is the uh, AS murmur usually radiates to the carotid cell, so it's organic, mm -hmm. it's organic. So that tells you significant carotid uh, st aortic st uh, lesion, no? Hmm. Yes, Palpable P2, how will you explain here? If there is a palpable P2, how will you explain here? Or you just tell me what are the signs of pulmonary, uh, pulmonary hypertension on your examination? Classical exam pul question. Pulmonary hypertension findings. If are, these are the findings are there, I will think of pulmonary hypertension in this question. Loud P2, sir. Palpable P2. Hmm. Uh, narrow splitting of S2, sir. Hmm. Uh, right front right uh, parasternal uh, heave, sir. Hmm. Subsequent pulsation can even also can be seen. Then murmur. 
Hello, Marmari yes, can hear no? E R Marmar. Yes, sir. E R Marmar can be heard. E R Marmar can be heard. Sir, yes, four can be heard. So generally, loud, uh, loud P two, palpable P two. How will you say loud P two in your examination? How do you say it's loud P two? Sir, when the P two intensity is the uh, is heard the same as in the basis of the heart in the apical regions, it is mm. loud P two, sir. That is loud P two. Okay. 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 Then, then the next slide. Right. So, okay, percussion. Next slide. Okay. Yes, single S two is here, da. Yes, sir. S two is stopped. Okay. Okay. Um. The murmurs ejections are great. Yeah. Okay. 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 Absolutely. So, uh, if there is a, your murmur is predominantly heard in which area? Left to third space or right space? Right second intercostal space. Predominantly, it is heard in the uh, right second intercostal space, sir. Right second intercostal space. Yes, so, sir. So most of the times they say valvular artery is most predominantly heard in the uh, left to third intercostal space, whereas aortic root dilatation. That uh, because of that scenario, no. Most of the times, right or right side the intercostal space better heard actually. What is Gallaudan phenomena? The high frequency component of the aortic stenosis murmur radiating to the apex and heard as a systolic murmur is uh, Gallaudan phenomenon, sir. So you told the AR murmur also, no? Yes, sir. You told the AR murmur also. Yes, then sir. You, how will you differentiate AR murmur from what is Austin Flint murmur? Austin Flint murmur is the seen in chronic AR, sir. And it is also a um, pansystolic murmur, which is, uh, sorry, sir, it's a mid diastolic murmur, which is heard in the uh, apex because of the regurgitant jet, which is hitting the anterior mitral reflex, sir. Okay, now you told about uh, there, is, there is premature closure of mitral valve because of regurgitant lesion impinging on the anterior mitral reflex. Now you told about Austin Flint murmur. How will you differentiate from MS murmur? Able to understand? No, I'm. We yes, sir. Discuss about uh, the murmur. Then we go back uh, to Austin. Murmur. It will have oh. a the murmur will classically have a now opening snap and pre-systolic accentuation will be there in MS murmur. Sir. Okay. Okay. And the murmur will uh, be radiating to the. The so opening snap, up, with respect to apex. What will have apex. already told you know it will be yeah, tapping, tapping apex, apex in the MS, whereas the leaving apex in yes. Apex then in opening yes, snap will be in case of my, case uh, of mitral. The then uh, your Austin plant you can hear only. You don't hear the opening snap. Then another feature severe, of the severe uh, severe PHT findings in case of predominantly Paris in case Paris. of mm. then. Okay, right. The, the MDM will be softer, actually, soft and short in case of Austin film. There will be prolonged with thrill, diastolic thrill, right? Okay, sir. So, this is how MS murmur has to be differentiated from Austin film murmur. The second thing is, wow, which you told CBA, what are the characteristic feature of severe AS in your examination finding? Similarly, what are the characteristic feature of severe AR? So, uh, able to understand, no? Yes, sir. Sir, in severe AS, uh, the pulse will be low volume. The character will be pulse sparvus et tardis, sir. And then the BP will be uh, lo uh, lower, sir. There will be systolic decapitation of the BP. And soft uh, S2 will be heard, sir. And in severe AS, there will be reverse splitting of S2. And presence of S4 will be there in severe AS, sir. And also the murmur will be harsh, long, with a late systolic peaking in severe AS, sir. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, These severe features AR. are present. It is severe AS. Severe AR. And then severe AR is a uh, significance of kill signs are more than 60 mmHg. Okay. And it means it is uh, severe AR, large volume pulse. Hmm. And other uh, peripheral signs of AR will be present to say it is a severe AR. Sir. And okay. also the murmur will be loud and harsh. Sir. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Now you tell me what you have, your patient is in severe A. Uh, what is it? Now you want to, with your with your finding, what do you want to do? You want to revise the diagnosis or this moderate A is mild A only? Low volume, narrow pulse pressure, 
ejection systolic murmur of grade 3 okay Severe, yes, sir, but uh, no, no, moderate, we don't appreciate yes, the reverse splitting, uh, sir. So, oh, it's very difficult. Okay, right. Uh, your S2 is soft, S2 is uh, become single. There is low pulse, there is narrow pulse pressure. Your patient has presented with dyspnea predominantly to your ED. Uh, then, narrow pulse pressure, low volume, narrow pulse pressure, S2 soft with injection systolic murmur. Uh, okay, right. You need to think of. Moderate severe, yes, actually. Okay, then. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. I'll come back again. I'll come back. Sharon? Yes, sir. Last slide, last slide. Diagnosis slide. Yes, sir. Now you know you say moderate AS with AR, no? Yes, sir. Okay, now he presents with the next month. He presents with the acute heart failure. What yes. is the first thing you want to rule out here? Uh, yes, rapid heart or other way around. I'm asking about any heart patient present, stable heart patients present to your ED with acute heart failure. Or what are the precipitating factors for acute heart failure in a known stable heart disease patient? Any heart disease patient. Arrhythmia, sir. Okay. Arrhythmia, you rule out then. Acute coronary syndrome. Okay, fine. And in, in com you are written, no, you are written, yeah, no, you are written. Heart failure will be facilitated by incompliance with drugs, sir, and uh, other uh, systemic okay. conditions like uh, thyroid mm. disease. The thing is, uh, infected endocarditis. Okay, sir. Uh, especially bicuspid patient alpatient can have infected endocarditis. So, any rapid, other than the severe anemia, uh, yeah, thyroid disorders, uh, these are all need to be ruled out. Whenever the patient, the patient presents with the heart failure, acute precipitating okay. factors, especially infection, as you previously told, elderly patient, recurrent respiratory infection, immunocompromised, okay, anything. No? Okay, so, sir. those are the most important things. Okay, your patient now in class NHA4. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Okay, sir. Sharon, how will you differentiate yes. from HOCM? Okay. AS from HOCM. HOCM. Yes, sir. Uh, in uh, apex will be uh, heaving apex in AS, sir. Whereas in HOCM, we can hear double apical impulse, sir. Have you ever felt that? Double apical impulse. Basically, the most important thing they say it's a jerky pulse and thready jerky pulse in HOCM. And most commonly, the most differentiating factor is dynamic auscultation. It will be your yes, favorite sir. short notes. Yes, sir. You need to definitely the examiner will ask about dynamic auscultation. Okay, sir. So you need to be 100 percent sure about the mechanism, why you do this maneuver, what happens with the, well, with the hemodynamics of the art. Then only you need to uh, uh, explain each and everything. In case of HOCM and IOT stenosis, dynamic auscultation plays a vital role in differentiating uh, from AS from HOCM. Any idea you have? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. so the maneuvers to increase the preload and uh, decrease the preload and maneuvers to increase the afterload and decrease the afterload we have to apply, sir. For increasing the preload, uh, uh, we can... Uh, what happens? In simpler way, you tell. You would just read about it in detail. Standing, what happens in HOCM? In standing, the venous return reduces, sir. So HOCM murmur in accentuates, sir. Hmm. There are okay. So the thing happens is this pulse or hand grip or squatting. You no, know, read about dynamic auscultation, read about pulse and JVP. Okay. These sir. three areas uh, and the second heart zone. Examiners will be very, very thorough about second heart zone. And uh, especially JVP, second heart zone, and this dynamic auscultation. Okay, sir. Zone. Okay. Uh, okay. Hello. Hello, sir. Ah, okay. Sharon, Sharon, is it audible? Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Uh, Sharon, uh, regarding the severity of PAS, okay. Yes, sir. From yes, sir. the pulse, uh, from the epical impulse, from the thrill. You didn't say about anything about S4, no? In uh, auscultation. S3, S4. S4, yes. S4. Since uh, it's a case of severe AS. Okay, sir. Okay, there's a possibility of hearing S4. 
Yes, yeah, that usually comment upon here. Okay, so based okay. upon the pulse, based upon your uh, so actually JP is a marker of what? It's a marker of right atrial pressure. It's a mean right atrial pressure. Okay, so any left sided pathology will increase JP? Yes, sir. AS and uh, stenotic lesions, AS and HOCM can increase the uh, what uh, is the burn him effect? Burn him effect, sir. In left sided. Uh, 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 obstructive lesions causing a rise in the airway of the GVP is Bernheim effect, sir, because of the increased left, uh, ventricular end diastolic pressure, which causes bulging of the interventricular septum into the right ventricle and thereby increasing the right atrial pressure, sir. That is Bernheim effect, sir. Hello, sir. Nothing is audible, sir. Hello, Sharon. Hi, yes, sir. Uh, we are able to hear you. Sharon. Yes, sir. You have examined, now you have examined the patient. Now you have got the history. We are, I haven't seen the ECG at all. What will be the expected ECG finding here? A patient you, may might have have, you might have definitely seen the ECG now. You saw the yes, ECG, sir. no? Yes, sir. I saw the ECG. So sir. now, with your respect to your examination, we haven't seen any ECG. Uh, we haven't seen this patient ECG. What will be the expected ECG finding here? With the history uh, of with what, with whatever you told you are now. Huh? Left ventricular hypertrophy, sir. LVH with strain pattern can be seen, sir. Uh, then, then. And if the patient is uh, any blocks, the rhythm abnormalities can also be seen, sir. Okay, okay, then. Basically, you don't know the patient is having autopnea, P and D also. Yes, sir. Uh, that always tells you there is increased LA pressure. So, uh, your patient ECG should definitely have LVH strain pattern. Okay, Similarly, sir. ECG should definitely should have left atrial enlargement. Okay, I'm, sir. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, maybe uh, you would understand that so your ECG should show LVH with LA actually. Okay, sir. Okay, uh, sir. Is there that what was there in the ECG? The rhythm was sinus, right? Because your rhythm is regular. Sinus rhythm, LVH with strain pattern was only there, sir. Was there? X-ray. What will be the X-ray? X-ray finding here? Yeah? X-ray finding. Uh, there will not be uh, cardiac size will be is expected to be normal because the in atrial stenosis there is only concentric hypertrophy, so there will be no shifting, sir. They, we can maybe we can see calcifications in the. And then post aortic uh, dilatation can also be seen, sir. What is carbovinum? C O R B O V I N U. What is carbovinum? Where will you get such? Uh, the, such in which valor artery does this term come? In severe AR. Hello? In severe AR, sir. Carbovinum. Uh, severe AR, no. It's, uh, you will be usually dilated, actually. Look like carbovinum, actually. Okay. Okay, sir. You need to find if, if this ECG is given for discussion, the examiner will definitely ask about criteria for LVH, LAE. Similarly, RAE, RVH criteria definitely examiner will ask. Hope you are know it. Okay. What investigation you want to do right now? So for this patient, uh, I would like to do an ECG, X-ray, and then an echocardiography, sir. Mm, echocardiography to find out the severity of the disease. Severity of the yes. Okay, okay. I don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, echo. What is there any doubt? I will uh, tell about echo. How will you manage this case now? The patient is uh, symptomatic, sir. So after uh, taking an echo, any lip mark you will do to tell the prognosis here. Basically, this patient's say, uh, IAS with AR, elderly patient, all this, pa this patient will have basically systolic dysfunction as well as terminally there are diastolic dysfunction also, right? Yes, so sir. Yeah, any blood, blood, thing, blood marker you can do and tell the prognosis here. That tells us a prognosis, especially your patient present with dyspnea at rest. Okay, sir. Uh, the patient is Okay. Yes, yes, that you just, I'm not asking about that one. Next thing, 
NT pro BNP sir. Now uh, NT pro BNP be grossly raised in the situation. No, that tells the um, the patient is a poor prognostic factor. Okay sir. So already this patient having PNT heart apnea signs of uh, failure. No, uh, probably this patient will be on anti-failure measures. That's okay. why your patient stable presentation when you saw no. All that tells the prognosis is actually post-op, especially if there is a severe AS in your echocardiography, the presence of systolic dysfunction or the presence of diastolic dysfunction or the presence of pulmonary hypertension, all this was presents the post-operative, increases the post-operative mortality actually. So if you say there is pulmonary hypertension, if you say there is significant diastolic dysfunction, this all increases the short-term mortality and long-term prognosis also is not good. Okay, sir. So NT pro BNP gives an idea. Then, what are the investigation important investigation you want to do rule or do for this patient? Your ECG shows LVH with left atrial enlargement. Good X-ray will show okay, no significant nothing. Uh, uh, echo will show uh, echo. You rule out. We find out the severe blood AS AR. We find out the systolic diastolic function, and we can definitely you need to look for the ascending aorta here because age-related aortic dilatation. Uh, aortic aneurysm are common in the elderly patient. So we, that will tell you whether aortic valve to be replaced, aortic valve with the root to be replaced and all. So these are all very important uh, investigation. Explain chest x also, we can find out certain things here. So what are the investigation you want to rule out? X-ray, ECG, echo, then what are the... Hello? Yes, sir. So, what are the investigation you want to rule out? Uh, to rule out a significant disease. You told me your differential diagnosis in your first slide. Yes, sir. Ischemic heart disease. When the patient has present with chest pain, chest pain, no? Dyspnea, yes, elderly so patient. Always do a coronary angiogram. The previous day, more than 40 years presenting for any valve or any intervention, we do a check angiogram. So we need to do a coronary angiogram. If there is a triple cell disease, the aortic valve disease, we need to do CABG with aortic valve replacement. Or okay. still, they do multi cell PCA with aortic valve replacement. Also, they will. What is TAVIR? What is SAVIR? Just expand it. Just expand it. That's enough. There is uh, total uh, aortic valve replacement, sir. Trans total. Mm -hmm. What is SAVIR? We say we are surgical aortic valve replacement, transfemoral aortic valve replacement. Transfemoral aortic valve replacement. Aortic valve replacement. Trans transfemoral aortic valve implant, TAVI, TAVIR, this is, you know. So, you, okay, so leave that. How will you manage? Right now, how will you manage your patient? What are you going to tell the patient? So your sir, final uh, diagnosis is moderate AS and mild AR of degenerative etiology. You told yes, accepted. Sir. Now, uh, how will you manage this patient? You have done a ECG, you have done an X-ray, you have done a uh, echocardiography, you have done an angiogram. Angiogram is not such as a significant coronary artery disease. Sir, if it's uh, uh, based on the grade uh, severity of AS, sir, if it is a if it's a severe AS. Uh, other, Karen, how did you manage this case? Uh, we'll go for, uh, since the patient is symptomatic, sir, we have to uh, give her, uh, and you have to assess the left ventricular uh, ejection fraction, sir. You know, Sharon, we have all done everything now. I'm, uh, you need to just write, I've asked you to write prescription for this case or from physician side, how, how will you write? Uh, what will be your prescription? Sir, for now, uh, we we'll treat this patient with anti-failure medication, sir. Hmm. And uh, uh, for his uh, chest pain, we can give him nitrates, sir. Mm. So antiplatelets with anti-anginal, antiplatelets. Anti-anginals and statins to reduce the progression. Mm. Well, with your clinical examination finding, will you refer the patient for surgery? Yes, sir. Patient can be uh, uh, referred for surgery, but uh, considering his age and... Uh, <laughs> Your, your final diagnosis is moderate AS with mild AR. No, he's responding to your medical treatment. Now he's a stable condition. Hmm? If it's a okay. moderate. Yeah. Mm. But you now if he's having severe uh, aortic valve areas only less than one centimeter square, then uh, we can uh, refer. And if the symptoms are because of the AS, then what we is can the normal aortic valve area? Uh, uh, one to two, uh, two to four. Normal uh, aortic valve area. area. Two to four you, told seven, you told the echocardiography finding, no, less than one centimeter square is severe. Then you tell me what is the normal aortic valve area? Three to four centimeters square, sir. Uh -huh. What is the normal mitral valve area?
four to six, no? Four. This is three to four. That is four to six. So mm -hmm. you put this patient on anti anti platelets and anti angels. Yeah, since he presents with dyspnea, give a mild dose of diuretic, na? Huh? Yes, and you sir. monitor this patient, no? That's more than enough for the right now for this patient with your clinical diagnosis. We haven't done echocardiography, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Sharon. Yes, sir. NHA classification, you told no. Yes, sir. It's class one, two, three, four. Actually, the NHA classification does not explain the syncope, actually. Okay, so sir. ordinary physical actually bring breathlessness, chest pain, fatigability, but there won't mm -hmm. be any syncope at all. Yes, sir. It does not include a, explain syncope in the right, huh? Yes, sir. That is examinable ask actually. Please, there is a Goldman specific activity. Goldman specific. Okay, sir. That is actually other which is whether the patient is able to do indoor activity or outdoor activity or recreational activity or sporting activity, other which is actually easier grade for the module. Okay, okay that's one more thing that's a Goldman specific activity. That's modified Goldman specific activities. Just uh, read about it. Okay, okay, sir. Any anything you need to ask me? Sharon, let the, yes, uh, regarding the level of stenosis, whether it is valvular, supravalvular, subvalvular. Yes, sir. What, what are the points for valvular aortic stenosis? When do you say valvular? The, uh, valvular aortic stenosis, the presence of uh, ejection flick, sir. Hmm. And uh, in uh, valvular aortic stenosis, the apex will be a heaving apex. In subvalvular, it will be double apex, sir. And uh, mm. come in the A2 in subvalvular, uh, uh, subvalvular A2 will be normal intensity, whereas in valvular it will be soft and degenerative and rheumatic uh, also, sir. And the in murmur, valvular, uh, the murmur will go to uh, carotid. Murmur okay, will be connected to carotids. Okay. Yes, sir. What is called? It is called a special effect. What is the name for that effect? Murmur, valvular Mur AS. Murmur connecting to carotids. So okay, it's called Caton effect. Okay, C A C A T Caton effect. Okay, what are the what are the uh, signs for uh, subvalvular stenosis? Subvalvular signs, sir. Yes, yes. Pulse, uh, epical impulse. So pulse in uh, epical impulse will be double epical impulse in uh, impulse in subvalvular yes, sir. Okay. Mm. And uh, the A2 will be soft, and uh, mm. uh, in murmur, uh, isometric hand grip will uh, in, uh, reduce the AS intensity in murmur. Mm. Dynamic auscultation. And the dynamic auscultation uh, in, the, in the subvalvular, the murmur intensity will increase sir, with isometric mm. hand grip. Mm. Whereas in the valvular, uh, it will reduce, sir. Hmm. Severity of yes, based upon your uh, heart sounds, sir, based upon your uh, murmur, can you say yes, anything? Sir. Severity of yes? Yes, sir. Uh, severity of yes in, uh, in mild yes, uh, it will be hmm. uh, uh, narrow split, sir. And in uh, moderate yes, it will be single uh, second heart sounds. And in severe hmm. yes, there will be reverse splitting or paradoxical splitting, sir. Okay, next. And the murmur, murmur will be murmur will be long, harsh with a late systolic peaking in severe AS. Sir. So early peaking in mild, mid peaking in moderate, and late peaking in severe. Okay. Okay, sir. So next S4. Presence of S4 indicates a severe AS, sir. Severe, okay. S3. Heart failure. Yes, yes sir. Yeah, S3 is there means heart failure is there, okay? Patient okay. is gone for heart failure, okay? Okay, sir. Uh, Saran? Yes, sir. Saran? Yeah. What, sir? I haven't attended actually for the last one hour, okay? May I know your diagnosis, complete diagnosis? Yes, sir. Okay, so far. This is the complete valvular... diagnosis. Yes, sir. The complete diagnosis is a case of acquired valvular heart disease, moderate AS with mild AR, Possibly degenerative etiology. Patient in sinus rhythm, no signs of heart failure, infective endocarditis or pulmonary hypertension. Patient in class 4 NYHA. Okay. 
you are de telling it's a degenerative etiology yes sir elderly individual huh? yes sir 75 year old male sir atherosclerotic uh, uh, etiology 74 what are the points yes. against rheumatic heart disease points against rheumatic heart disease sir is the age of onset sir it is uh, and more in the he is in the 7th to 8th decade sir so the age of onset is much later and uh, he is not having any significant how can you know, can you know it maybe in the 30 40 years also you have detected in the seven late age only is it possible yes sir as can be asymptomatic for many years before presentation so it can be possible mm. is there is any possibility of anything uh, hcm because always aortic stenosis aortic regeneration you have to keep it's a in an emergency department okay something for example rheumatic heart disease atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease okay patient may not may not die immediately okay especially moderate to severe as okay usually uh, rightly pointed out dr devan uh, he has rightly pointed out syncopal attack chest pain and palpitation and uh, suggestive of a uh, heart failure also may be there okay so here uh, the important thing important things in the aortic stenosis aortic pure aortic regeneration what all the thing you will think in terms of in this patient for example moderate to severe aortic regeneration you are detecting at the age of 40 uh, i mean at the age of 50 years or 60 years what all the possibilities you have to keep it in mind in a emergency department aortic regurgitation now uh, if you're detecting you have to also consider other uh, 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 con conditions which cause aortic root dilatations are like traumatic process and uh, connective tissue disorders mm. rheumatoid rheumatoid arthritis ankylosing spondylitis in emergency department you are telling a some rare possibility If aortic you don't detect this patient, as aortic dissection, always you have to think in terms. Okay, hmm? moderate, moderate to severe AR. Okay, always rule out aortic dissection. If you don't detect early, you will lose the patient. Our laparoscopic surgeon died due to aortic dissection. Laparoscopic surgeon, popular laparoscopic surgeon in Dr. Raja from. Mm, Pollachi. We have lost because of that. Definitely, if we did the echo, definitely moderate AR or mm, severe AR may be there. Okay, that's very important. Another important thing is infective endocarditis, acute AR, infective endocarditis. Always you have to rule out. Okay, okay. there is nothing is there in mitral or tricuspid wall or pulmonary wall. You know, you are confirmed. Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, treatment part uh, uh, they have finished or not yet? So we discussed about the uh, ECG, X-ray, echo, and the treatment part. The short, shorter bit. Treatment we part over. Devan. Ah, uh, sir, we discussed about uh, what will be the expected ECG finding here, X-ray and echo finding. How will the medical management about the treatment? Yes, sir. 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 treatment part okay what is the type of treatment you want to give this patient atherosclerotic cardiovascular atherosclerotic acvd okay with uh, moderate as and moderate mild ar you will submit them for transcutaneous aortic valve replacement for this patient hello sir uh, we, uh, we have to based on whether they are symptomatic or asymptomatic sir because it is mild to moderate as Mm. And if they are uh, asymptomatic, if they are symptomatic and the ejection fraction is less than fifty percent, then uh, if the valve area is less than one centimeter square, we will send, we will do surgery, sir. And if it's the uh, ejection fraction is more than fifty percent, and if it's the cause for symptoms, then we can consider surgery for them, sir. Okay, this patient, Maori days, what uh, what is the BP target you want to keep? BP target. On one, uh, one, one twenty systolic. Devan can <laughs> guide us. 
ஜிக்கல் <laughs> இன்ஃபாக்ஷன் <laughs> Uh, even coronary artery dissection mm. also can occur sometimes rupture okay uh what's her name S- saran yes sir yeah so management a part of you so as a uh, as a complete physician as a emergency physician okay uh, it's a abcd management so when as a physician you are seeing by echo you are seeing Uh, you will be confirming by echo okay so, so moderate ar always rule out two things aortic dissection aortic dissection and uh, and a uh, infective endocarditis these two things and stenosis aortic stenosis nowadays transcutaneous aortic wall replacement or lot of things are there there are lot of things that next week dr sengot will is is, uh, is talking about uh, in chennai uh, actually okay so whether this patient is fit to undergo aortic wall replacement transcutaneous aortic wall replacement that and all you should know and aortic stenosis aortic stenosis generally what all the five pillars of heart failure here class 4 nihca classification is there okay so what are the drugs you want to give this patient what are the five pillars of heart failure sir ac inhibitors ac inhibitor or ar or uh, mm-hmm. arb or orni orni sir depends upon the particular drug number 1 drug is orni start with low dose 50 mg slowly update it depends upon the tolerability of potassium and creatinine okay okay sir ac or arb or orni depends upon the affordability nowadays affordability is not a problem previously the cost is increased now it is coming around 30 rupees so definitely you can use orni okay but slow start slow dietation then beta block number 1 is ac or arb or beta blocker so this patient you have to keep other patients and all as a electrophysiologist you here you can keep the heart rate up to 50 okay here aortic stenosis you have to be little bit cautious you have to keep 50 to 60 around 60 you have to keep because uh, bradi will end up in angina angina as well as coronary perfusion will be reduced so beta blocker you have to be very cautious and as well as many patients many patients beta blocker with evapridin combination it's also one of the thing combination very cautiously you have to use you cannot use this patient because brody severe brody cardia may produce syncope attack or cva also and next drug a mineral cortical receptor antagonist pyrinolactone pyrinolactone epilrone phenirnone nowadays cardiac inflammation is reduced both cardiac as well as renal anti inflammatory anti fibrotic activity the only drug class 1a indication is mra nowadays yeah next, next drug sglt2 inhibitors sglt2 inhibitor you can use even in a non diabetic patient you can use sglt2 inhibitor okay here atherosclerotic already acvd so it's it is also there is a indication so you can use dapagliflozin low dose start with low dose okay even 5 mg you can use dapagliflozin okay and diuretics also very cautiously okay after load if you reduce 
more of load, it can end up in a problem. As rightly pointed out, cardiologist Devan, so diuretic as well as beta blocker, even though he has class four, NIH classification wise, class four, these two drugs you have to be very cautious. You have to prescribe and use. Okay. okay. Always nowadays, as a physician, we are forgotten many things. The basic, always any cardiac drugs, pulse should be kept between 50 to 60. Meticulously, you have to record. Okay. Meticulously, you have to record uh, under, under the tension, under the influence of alcohol, under the influence of smoking, under the influence of stress and strain, the uh, coffee intake, all the things you have to rule out. Okay. Leisurely, you have to record pulse rate or routinely in your future as a physician, you should have a multiparam monitor. Just record your six vital signs always. As a future physician, always pulse rate, temperature, respiratory rate, PTR, and BP and SpO2 and capillary blood glucose. Okay, random. This is six vital signs. Always you should not forget in especially cardiology cases, okay, when you are prescribing. Because it depends upon the pulse rate, it depends upon the BP, accurate BP without any complaints. Many times yesterday, I have not taken beta blocker. In the morning, I have not be taken beta blocker. Two days, I have not beta blocker, not on beta blocker. Clear, clear, faithful, truthful history you have to take. Otherwise, you will increase the beta blocker, you will end up in sudden hypotension. Okay, certain bradycardia, syncopal attack. So, complaints is very important. Heart rate and BP meticulous recording. So, always when the patient is having cardiac problem, you have to, in the prescription itself, heart rate 60 per minute with the drugs. BP 1, uh, 160 by 100 without oral uh, antihypertensive drug since two days. Since we missed it for two doses. You mention it. Otherwise, your prescription will be blamed. You have not updated the beta blocker or updated the any anti drug. So, you are typically you are pointing out it's a drug compliance is poor. So, after the compliance is good, you have to, um, we have to, you have to escalate or de-escalate the cardiac drugs. You have to take a decision. This is three important points I have to mention. I want to give for your uh, postgraduate students. Okay, always pulse BP recording is very, very important. Okay, you can go ahead. Okay, sir. Anita? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any other points to discuss? Uh. Uh, Dr. Devan, sir, you want to give any take home message, sir? Yeah, finally, take on the message. Saravanan, where are you? Sir, I'm here. I'm here. This is your discussion. Yeah, yes. From the beginning, I'm with the discussion. Yeah. Saravanan, give a conclusive um, take home message and Devan also. I think, yes, Devan, sir, please go ahead. Uh, sir, I'd uh, like to thank for, uh, everyone for giving me this opportunity. Uh, actually, Thank everyone. Um, first of all, the uh, point most important thing is any, and this is my dictum as my professor always used to tell me, any unexplained heart failure in the elderly patient, you will think uh, as you evaluate coronary artery disease, you have to load aortic stenosis. In the setting of failure, you will not have all these classical signs will not be there. So if you're not able to die, uh, as you give importance to coronary, coronaries, the same importance to be given in aortic valve in elderly patient. Similarly, we are, as you think of valvular calcification, always look for coronary calcification, always look for degenerative calcification, degenerative area, conduction system disturbance, as well as peripheries has to be examined in this patient. It not because, as I told, TAVI, femoral artery, again, this is important. So what I'm trying to tell you is, it, now it is cardio as well as vascular system. So the entire thing has to be examined in the perfect way. And any exaggerating factors for heart failures, every admission has to be treated in terms of infection or severe anemia or thyroid disorders or, or renal failure, or associated comorbidities, all these things. Thing. And one more important thing is, as there is a degenerative etiology in aortic valve, the similar degenerative etiology can happen in the mitral valve also. So what happens is the posterior mitral annular can get calcified. In such situation, patient can have like a situation of acquired MS. 
so a lot of times what they think is rheumatic actually it's not rheumatic what happens in the degeneration happens in the aortic valve the same thing can happen in the mitral valve per se so the patient will have predominantly posterior mitral involvement so that will have, put a gradient you get a ms like gradient so it's not rheumatic in, in that age group with no previous uh, history especially less than 50 or 60 50 years age group so any elderly patient the degeneration process not only happens in the aortic valve it extends into coronaries as well as other valves also predominantly mitral especially in the setting of ckd this is predominantly will be seen ckd patient uh, so the most important point is uh, the tavir it is the most beautiful uh, thing happening in cardiology and every center is doing it now the cost has come relatively very less actually previously when it started it came more than 30 lakh now they are doing even for 10 to 15 lakhs also so the option of surgical management as well as trans catheter management is still there so that has to be evaluated and patient has to be refer referred but the only thing is it's not available in our government setup but thought people are doing in, uh, in all corporates so uh, tavir is one of the beautiful interventions of cardiology other than coronaries so that has to be entertained and that has to be told the patient actually so that is the most important thing i like to tell you sir thank you thank you so much sir dr damodaran sir you want to share any take home message sir sir your voice is sir your voice he has got a poor connectivity doc uh, okay sir okay sir uh, then shall we wind up sir any more yeah, questions yeah. Yeah. hello can you hear me yes sir so uh, your voice it's break out sir hello yes sir damodaran sir I think Damodaran sir's connectivity is very poor. I think that's the basic reason for. Uh, yeah, sir, Ronan. Yeah, proceed. Yeah. So, two important things I would like to stress upon as far as the exam is concerned. First one is when you are given a case of cardiovascular case, most of the time at the postgraduate it's going to be a short case, not a long case. So, in which case you are given only 15 minutes for the examination, in which case you are supposed to examine the neck in thorough. More specifically, don't forget to examine the thyroid gland. Even though the case is given to you cardiovascular, look at the arterial system, venous system. Important third one is going to be your thyroid examination. Second important is precardium. Already everybody will be very much familiar with and go ahead with the precardial examination. Don't forget to examine the upper abdomen as well as posterior chest. So the important, uh, very short way of uh, looking at uh, approaching the cardiovascular case is very important. And if you are able to do this in a systematic manner, it will take hardly, hardly six to seven minutes for you to finish the examination. This is what the practicing pattern from the MRCP exams. So it will be able to do it in at least eight to 10 minutes at the max, not more than that. Number two important uh, take home message already Dr. Palnepan sir, as well as Dr. Devan sir, was uh, highlighting about. The important way of approaching the cardiovascular case is going to be your basic science, basic examination of your uh, pulse, inspection, palpation, uh, before going to and venturing into new findings, identifying from the auscultation. So try to spend a minute extra with the general examination, inspection, and palpation. You try to understand the patient's hemodynamism. That makes your understanding of the pathological change. Instead of <clears throat> spending a lot of time in the auscultation alone, sometime you might be misled. So it's very important that you spend a minute's time extra at the general examination and inspection and palpation, try to understand the hemodynamism of the individual. That makes your easy way of understanding the auscultative finding and correlate, come out with a reasonably decent clinical diagnosis. 
I think these are the two important take-home messages I would like to stress upon. I think uh, that's all from my side. So. Yeah, today actually the participant is as a panelist alone, it's showing actually in the YouTube more than 100 people are uh, watching the YouTube. So this week converts YouTube will be live. So you can uh, see, uh, you can attend the class in the YouTube also, whatever you are convenient time. The YouTube, it's a recorded format will be there. And the audience, uh, audience, this uh, Zoom link actually, audience side, attended side, they have attended more than 70 students they have attended today. So participant or nine to 10 participant. So to around 200 people are every week we are, and they are attending. It's really, it's a happy news. So it should improve, increase more than 500. That is my expectation uh, uh, to Dr. Saravanan and Anita, all the medical college professors and Scrum also. Uh, you can uh, motivate other postgraduate students from Karnataka also. Any take home message from Sangram? Sangram is Sangram is there? Sangram brother. He's not there, sir. He's left, sir. Uh, okay. He's, he's uh, left. Okay, okay. He was there. He was okay. there, but just left. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, over to Anita. Mm. Yes, Anita. Uh, actually, <coughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, actually. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Damodran, sir, and uh, Dr. Devan, sir. Actually, it was an uh, extensive academic feast. You discussed a lot uh, practical points. Thanks a lot, sir. And Dr. Sharon, uh, well done. You answered uh, most of the questions with uh, in detail. So, good keep it up. So, um, thank you so much, uh, Pallayapan, sir, and Sarvanan, sir, for this great opportunity, sir. Actually, we uh, completed almost uh, more than 1030 at the time. So the whole yeah. time we uh, uh, discussed. Thank you, sir. We yeah, will give a, give a big applause to our PG student, Olive Sharon. Really, she did a wonderfully, very well, and very said almost of the questions. So we'll keep it up. From this onwards, uh, week onwards, IPCO laboratory people, they are sponsoring. They are cooperating very well. And last two and a half years, micro people, they did in a wonderful manner, a marvelous manner. So this will be, this has been taken over by IPCA people for the next three years. Under the leadership of IPCA, that's a vice president. We give a great applause and uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Johnny, vice president of IPCA for, uh, for giving this uh, actually Zoom, Zoom and YouTube platform for the benefit of our uh, doctor as well as uh, professors as well as postgraduate students we'll give a thank you very much uh, mr johnny for the cooperation so uh, all this uh, zoom link audience link everything will be ready uh, even after eight o'clock itself if there is any problem any queries you can directly contact anita and saravanan you are in the it team being also if there is any problem they will solve it so at sharply 8 30 we will start the program i we will end up the program at 10 30 sharp thank you very much for patiently listening devan and uh, thank you, sir. everybody you did a wonderful job marvelous job thank you very thank much you, thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you good night all of you thank you good night good night thank you